Hello everyone, and welcome back to another GIS lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to continue our discussion on data classification by talking about this idea of the standard deviation and the way that we can use standard deviation to create classes that are based on the distribution of the data set. Okay, let's go ahead and give ourselves some space here. And we're going to talk again about this idea of standard deviation. Right. And so just a recap briefly of what standard deviation is so that you understand what we're doing and what we're getting out in terms of the class breaks. Right. Standard deviation is broadly a measure of variance. Right. And if you don't know what variance means, variance is basically just a measure of how different the different data points in your data set are from the mean. Or another way of saying this is how spread out is your data along a number line. All right, so how different is the data? from the mean right if your data is really spread out right there's a there's a high range and a lot of, of variation and the data is really spread out the individual data points on average are going to be farther from the mean meaning you're going to have a higher variance right conversely if most data points are similar in value they're not spread out across the number line they're not going to be as different from the mean you're going to have a lower variance so again, variance is basically just a measure of how different your data points are from each other and from the mean. So the way we actually calculate standard deviation, and I want to make up a note here that for this case, we're actually talking about population measures. Normally, when you think standard deviation in statistics, you're taught sample. But in this case, we're going to be using um, population standard deviation. Right, and so you'll sometimes see that represented with this symbol here. Um, and so what we have is we're going to take the square root of the sum of all of the data of x i minus x bar over n, right? Where n in this case is not the number of classes. This, this is the standard way this equation is written. Right? In this case, n is, is the number of features. Right. Um, this x bar here, this is the mean of the data. This xi here. This is the value of one feature. So basically what this equation is telling us to do is it's saying, hey, what is the difference for a single feature from the mean? Oh, I'm sorry, I actually forgot a square there. We're squaring that variation. Um, what's the difference from one feature from the mean? Square it. Do that for all of the features in the data set. Add it up and divide it by the number of features. Take the square root, and that's our standard deviation. So you can think of this sort of in a sense, because the math here isn't perfectly this way, but you can think of this as, as, an, as an essence of measuring the average distance between every point in the data set and the mean. So what does this have to do with our idea of data classification? So the way we can use this to classify data is if we have some data right, distributed um, along a number line, right, and we have some mean, which I'll call x bar, right? we have some mean. What we can do is we can calculate this value of standard deviation. We can calculate this value of standard deviation. And we can say, hey, we're going to set our class breaks up 
equal to this value of standard deviation. So the idea being that just like with equal interval where the range for each class was the same, but it was based on the range of the data set, we can do something similar here and we can say, well, we want to make each class's range equal to the standard deviation centered on the mean, right? So what we can do is we can start with the mean of the data here and we can say, okay, we'll go a like half a standard deviation to the left of the mean and a half a standard deviation to the right of the mean, right? And this right here, this just right, this can be a class, right? Then we can go another full standard deviation, right? One standard deviation, right? And this can be another class, right? Then we can go a standard deviation on this side, right? Another full standard deviation on this side. And this can be a class, right? And so our breaks are going to be based on the standard deviation relative to the mean. I know this is a little bit confusing because it's, it's very different in the approach that we started with the first couple where we were starting with the lowest and working our way to the top. Here we're starting at the middle and we're working our way out, okay? So let's go ahead and switch over to our Excel sheet and take a look at how this looks in practice. Okay, so here is our data set. It's the exact same as before. I'm going to add a new class for standard deviation, which I'm going to abbreviate SD. And so what we need to do, I'm going to delete some of this stuff because we need the space for calculations. What we need for standard deviation is we need to know the mean of the data set and we need to know the standard deviation. So mean, we can calculate that as average, right? The average of our values. Okay. The standard deviation, we can calculate using standard deviation dot p because we want to use the population because we're assuming that we have all of the features that we want in here. And we're going to do that. Okay, so we have our mean and we have our standard deviation. Okay. So the way this is going to work is we're going to end up having our class. I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to do it down here just before we copy up here. Um, our first class is going to be the mean minus one half of the standard deviation to the mean plus one half of the standard deviation. So I'm going to set that. I'm just going to quickly divide that by two. So this right here is half of our standard deviation. Right, so our middle class is going to be equal to um, the mean minus half, that's our low end. And our high end is going to be the mean plus half. Okay, so this is our middle class. And I don't know if it's going to be class three, because with this, we don't know how many classes we're going to have. We just have to figure out based on the number of, uh, we just keep going with this idea of standard deviation until we hit the bottom and the top. So then our class below this, right, is going to be this minus the full standard deviation, right? So it's going to be equal to this minus the full standard deviation, 14, right? equals this minus this. And since we're below the value, this is going to be our first class. So for standard deviation, oops, for standard deviation, our first class is going to be negative 10.3, negative 10.3. To, and then I'm going to round everything, so I'm going to say 14.4. Oops. 
want the equal sign there. Negative 10.3 to 14.4. Okay, that's supposed to be negative, but we'll leave that alone. Then our next class is going to be 14.5 to 39.3, right? Because that's the difference between this and this. Our next class is going to be 39.4 to 64.3. Point one, right? So then to go up, we're going to start. So now we're going to be going from the mean up. So we're going to take our upper bound and we're going to add to that our full standard deviation. So that's going to be 64.2 to 88.9. And then finally, 89.0 to our max, which is 100. And for consistency, we'll switch this one to 11. Right? And so you can hopefully see how we had to start in the middle based on the mean, work our way down from the lower value and up from the higher value to figure out our class boundaries. Okay? I know this one's a little bit more confusing, so hopefully you un hopefully it all made sense. I encourage you to rewatch this video a couple of times just so you understand the difference between dealing it with it in this abstract sense, where we were talking about the mean and portions of the standard deviation, to dealing in the real world sense, where we actually calculated the mean, set our middle class half way half a standard deviation down half a standard deviation up, and then worked going along like that. Hopefully this made sense. And as always, if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.